All right, so what you're seeing here is a Microsoft Office 365 product called Bookings. This is the end user or your customer, client, student, advisee, whoever you interact with, this is their experience. You will see it's a beautiful branded experience. I'm currently on my institution where I work, Southern Illinois University. So this is what I use for allowing students, other faculty to book with me. It's just a really nice looking screen. It's very simple to use as you will see. Let's say a student comes along for you. It could be a client and they choose a 15 minute meeting. You could label this other things. I will show you my consulting business screen here in a minute. Let's say the student chooses 15 minute meeting. You will see that there are no availability right now for my calendar on this particular day. This is the, I'm recording this on June 5th, just so you know. I do require a lead time, and when I started initially recording this, there was actually a spot available for 510, but because I require a four hour lead time, that is no longer an option. So a lot of customizability in terms of what you allow people to book in. Like you could require a 48 hour in advance booking. So if someone comes along, uh, they would need, they would only be able to see things 48 hours from now. It is connected to your Outlook calendar, so any updates you make there automatically blocks out other information. So for example, let's say a student was looking to book on the 9th of June, they could choose 1050, but let's say I just right now get a call from a colleague and they're like, hey, can you meet with me from 10 to 11 on Tuesday? I could say yes, I would put that in my calendar and then it would no longer be available to people on this site. So this is all integrated. And then details could be provided in the case of students, for example, I want to know who they are, what their email is. This is great because then it sends email reminders, it sends uh, a calendar notification. You will also get a calendar notification. It'll book right into your calendar, making it super sweet. If you are running a business, let's just look at what it might look like. Take note that there's no details here except for this one here where it says free. And that's because I want students to understand that as a career consultant that charges money to other clients, I do not charge money to them. But for my business, you will see that communication at work has a variety of options. Business partners can book in a 45 minute meeting. It is free in terms of cost. Current clients can book in a 15 minute meeting. The price varies there. All of my prices varies, but I am about to add a LinkedIn option and that would have a standard price of $60 per hour. So you can do a variety of things to customize the client experience. Now, if you have multiple people that work in your business, then let's say that they choose this option and then it allows you to choose which staff would be booking in. This is great if you have a bunch of employees, if you have specific units that you want to connect on the back end, but a lot of this needs to be done by your IT folks. So I'm not going to go into those details today. Now, of course, you might ask for contact details like address and phone number, especially if you're in business because then uh, you have marketing materials that you can follow up with. So that again is the user experience. And so let's take a look at how you would actually go about setting up booking so that you can use it, um, you know, so that people can book with you. So as I said, this is an Office 365 product, which means that it will be available via your Outlook account. If you go to the menu waffle here, you will see that you have a variety of applications. Now this will be specific to your organization and what type of user you are. So it is possible that your organization does not have bookings. It is possible that they only allow certain users to use bookings. Now, if you do not see bookings here, you will note that there is all apps and you can click on that and you can actually search for additional apps. What you would want to search for is bookings. Once you get to bookings, you would click on it or you can open in a new tab. I already opened one, so I'm gonna go here and this is what it would look like for you. So I did all of this on my own. I didn't have to contact my IT people. So what you're about to see is things that you should be able to do on your own if you have access to bookings. Again, if you do not, reach out to your IT people and they can show you how to set it up. Now, um, 
I went through and I did change some things in terms of the options that I had. I you know, put my first name here as what the page would look like. Um, you can connect your calendar, kind of shows you what it's connected to. But what you really want to do is go to this booking right here page. So, okay, this is really all that matters for this particular video. Just going to show you how you can set up bookings pretty easily. Now, this will be your URL that you will be able to send people to to book and you will see that it is super long and atrocious. So this is why I have a button on my web page and I also have a tiny URL that people can use so it's easier for them to remember or see. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You could even add a tiny URL booking option on a business card, for example. Uh, you could turn it into a QR code that they could scan and takes them to that page. So lots of options here, but let's not dive, uh, go too far off the rails here and stay with what I want to show you. Now, you will also see that you can choose color choices. Uh, there should be an option if your organization has already set it up that matches your institution, organization, or business's colors. And that is what I have selected. But you will have noted that, for example, on my business page, I'm using a different customized option and therefore the colors are different. So you'll choose that. You can connect to Facebook if you would like a book now on your Facebook. Uh, I don't have Facebook, so I don't have that option set. Uh, you can sort of indicate what you want in terms of page access and control. I'm not gonna go into all of these details, just go with the default because that's what your organization will have set up. You can choose to display the business logo and you would actually upload the logo here by clicking on it and so you can upload a new logo. Okay, you can indicate various things like what's your scheduling policy. So if you remember, I said at the beginning of the video that when I first started recording, before I had to do multiple takes, at one time, at about uh, 1 p.m., you would have seen on this June 5th, you would have seen an option for a 5.10 p.m. booking. But it disappeared because in my page, I have a minimum lead time of four hours. I have a maximum lead time of 45 days, which means that nobody can book in you know, a month and a half from now. You can change the lead time to 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, whatever works for you. You can change what the increments of time are. I like to give 10 minutes. Students tend to operate pretty well in that. Uh, for my consulting business, I just do it as 30 minute increments. You can set up notify the business. You can set up notify the customer. I like having both those options, but if you have a ton of people booking in, for some reason you might disable the email notification and it still will go to your calendar so no worries there uh, always choose like booking when staff are free this means that in the calendar it is only available when it is free you could set up custom hours though so if you have office hours that you only want students to be able to book in during office hours you can set that up but I like to be very available to students so it's pretty much if my calendar doesn't have a slot already taken go ahead and book but again you could set it up for for example only two hours a day can whoever you're sending to your bookings page can they book in you can also do custom hours but I'm not going to do that now once students book I'm just gonna discard that because I don't want to make any changes it actually will keep a file list of all the various people that have ever booked in with you phone numbers and so forth and you can follow up with them so this becomes sort of an integrated uh, marketing platform that you can use but again maybe for higher education which is what I'm showing you currently I don't really need that uh, you again you can set up staff if that's what you're doing and then this is where you're going to set up your services so you can add a service you can create the service name, a description, where the location is, if it varies. And uh, you can go through, you can set up buffer time. So for example, nobody can book 10 minutes after someone else has already booked. And what I mean after, it's like if you have a student meeting with you from 12 to 1220, then nobody would be able to book in at 1220 to 1230. 
35. It gives you a buffer time to always be able to have a plan for meetings that might run over or just to give you a break. So go ahead and do that. You can select whether you want it to be an online meeting and I'll show you an option for that. This is where you're going to basically set, you know, can more people come? What is the prices? Price not set is the best option if you do not want to display any kind of details related to money. I think it seems weird if you have free for like office hours, for example, but here you can say price varies and that option is because I click price varies. You can set a fixed price and the amount that you want. You can add more fields if you want and you can add notes or details, okay? I think that's enough. You can kind of dial down the page, but this is essentially all I really ever change. Make sure that I discard that. Of course, you would probably want to save that. I do want to show that for online meetings, so I did create an option recently for online meetings, and what's great about this is that when I have this collect, uh, selected, it automatically emails, just wanted to make sure there was no other settings that I had set up, but it automatically emails a Teams link to the end user, so both of you in your calendar can just click that. Imagine, because you might not be using Teams, it would be like getting a Zoom link immediately. So this is why I'm a big fan personally of using Teams because it just keeps everything in my ecosystem of Office 365. So there you have it. I hope this tutorial has been very helpful to you. I hope that you will use Microsoft Bookings. It's just a really cool tool. And if you would like any update videos, if you need help, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I would be glad to set something up with you or do another video on something that you need explained. And that's it. Happy bookings.